that's how drivers getting burnt you know they hop on facebook they see some postings about i swear i saw like yesterday a posting for a box truck they were guaranteeing uh eight to twelve thousand dollars a week for a solo driver twelve to fifteen thousand dollars a week for a team driver for a box truck and i sent him a comment like is this per month no this is per week like pm me you know it's just nonsense and a driver will go with a dispatch like that they will have their worst experience in their life and that's it like that guy's perspective on dispatch is like completely changed hey chris so can you tell us uh, what made you interested in the trucking industry why did you start because uh, you've been doing some other work before this and why exactly trucking yeah like you said and it's in the previous video actually that you're not connected with the trucking family you know you don't have a father or a grandfather who worked with trucking same goes for me i'm not coming from a family uh for truck drivers you know i just i like the dynamics of the job i was doing a job as a rental agent based here in my country and i was there for more or less three three and a half years and the job was containing like customer service 24 7 presence whenever a problem occurs with the cars or the vans we have to make sure that we fix the issue you know find a solution so I was familiar with dispatching since 2015, but I never really considered it as a job. So I just accepted what I had at the moment. And by the time COVID hit, like 2019, beginning of 2020, I just figured that it's time for a change. You know, the salary was basically like minimal. I needed an upgrade in my life. So I started doing my research. I found your channel. I found a couple of other channels. Like I've Googled every single information out there, you know, considering trucking and trailers and how's the market in the United States, everything literally. And it wasn't hard to find the information, but you know, it, it just takes time to process everything, to put everything together, to get a good understanding how everything works, because in theory, it's different than a practice and by the time i actually find my first driver i was so nervous to start you know i knew everything in my notebook but i've never actually practiced it so it was it was a really anxious experience at the beginning but as, as, as soon as you start as soon as you make that first phone call i mean you could you basically become aware that it's doable you know it's doable no matter where you live like if you know your job you will be good at it you know and many people are actually considering this like a side hustle like i would get one truck i mean it's doable if your uncle drives a truck in the united states you can dispatch for him you know but if you really consider it as a job like dispatching three or five trucks or seven trucks it just cannot be a side hustle you know you have to be there very often like more than eight hours a day very often so i like i don't know i like the dynamics of the job I like solving issues, problems, and dispatching is all about that, you know? Especially like when you said uh, that uh, you need uh, more time to find loads for trucks, especially in bad market times. If, if we have good markets, then it's easy to cover a few trucks in advance, maybe even for a week. But nowadays it's harder. So you, you have to be, you have to sit at the computer and just, stare at it all day and just wait for that one load and then click on and call exactly exactly and if you're not fast it'll be covered like a good load gets covered in like literally 10 seconds i've seen it i've seen it by the time i dial the number the load is just covered you know and you just go for the next one and especially with box trucks you know the options are way more limited than a semi truck so you have to be there like non-stop you know without any single like if you go to the bathroom, a load might get covered, you know? And it's just those 15, 20 seconds. You have to be yeah. there. Yeah, that is true. Well, uh, I always find uh, when I talk to someone who wants to become a dispatcher and they have no experience or they don't know where to start, and they say, well, how do I start this? How do I, uh, will I be able to do this? I always ask them, well, what's, uh, 
your previous experience, what kind of work did you do before? And you should, I think, in my opinion, always try to connect it to find um, something that's similar, a connection between those, those two jobs. With you, it was sales. So you were in uh, sales in rentals, and you could easily say that this job is kind of like that. You're actually uh, looking around uh, for uh, loads and trying to buy those loads from the brokers and resell them to these drivers because you have to um, talk the brokers into getting more money and working with you. And then you have to talk to the driver, to the owner operator and, and present that law so they understand that uh, you know the markets might be bad there might not be uh, enough loads where where the driver is in order to make sure that they understand the situation so they can take the law that that's my opinion exactly exactly and if i have to cut it out a little bit i'm having yeah that's fine i'm having a call i'm not sure if it's the broker dispatch good sir how are you so when I initially asked you about the uh, trucking industry, why trucking industry, uh, can you also tell us uh, how did you, because you were looking to find something uh, online, to be able to work online, to be able to work from home using uh, your English skills, because your English is very good and you have experience with computers as well. So you're trying to find something that you can do, but how, did you uh, stumble upon uh, tracking and dispatching per se? What, did you do any research online? Like, hey, what could I be doing online? What, what's there that I could do that I would be able to to succeed in? How? Why exactly tracking? Why dispatching? Yeah, as I said, like I was familiar with tracking dispatching since 2015, but I wanted to do this job like. Uh, in office, you know, work for a trucking company, but I live in a small town here in my country and not many options are actually available here. In the capital city of, of Macedonia, there are plenty of options to go work with. And I have actually sent like tons of CVs and emails about jobs, but they were all like, yeah, we, we offered this job, but it has to be done in office. You know, it cannot be done remote from home. So there was one trucking company in my town i applied there i went for an interview everything seemed all right but about the salary it was pretty much the same as my previous job so it didn't make any sense like money wise and that's why i didn't didn't go there so i started doing some online research like how can i do this like from home you know and at the beginning, when you don't have the information, it practically seems impossible. You know, you're just sitting at your home dispatching trucks in the United States, but it's doable at the end, you know. So I picked up like tons of information and one small advice actually for new dispatchers would be like, you know, you're ready to dispatch when you don't have like some nonsense question to ask, you know, when you go to the Facebook groups, if you ask some nonsense question, that means that you have to do some more research. You know, if you basically know the basic stuff of dispatching, you are ready. Tricks like, I don't know, double brokers, like blind shipments, drop trailers, those tricks you will learn along the way. But as far as basic knowledge goes, you have to know that beforehand, you know, before you, you even start calling drivers and acquiring new carriers. So, okay. yeah. That's that's a really good point. I uh, I get really good questions on the channel, inside comments or uh, in the email. But then also I get questions like that, like you just said, some really basic questions that, I mean, and then I'm I'm thinking to myself, well, if you're asking this question, then it's this is either not for you or you have to learn a lot more. And I don't have the heart to tell them that I, I'm trying to answer that because they asked me a specific question and then I answer that. I try to answer all the questions. Sometimes I can. Uh, but like you said, uh, that's a sign that you are not ready. But then everything else can be learned along the way as long as you know the basics and then everything else. Yeah, you're right. Okay, I, I really like that. 
If I have a good question, I mean something that comes with an experience and if I don't know it, it's okay to send you an email or a text message or whatever to ask you about it. But what is an MC? You know, it's pretty basic. You have to know that, like what kind of trailers, what kind of cargo goes to what the different trailers, you know, you have to know those, those things. And especially on Facebook groups, like people asking, oh my God, Oh my God, I'm I'm there, and like you said, you 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 cannot tell them like directly. I I comment like, hey, just go back a little bit, learn some more, and come back to this group. You'll go from there. Not that I'm a specialist, you know, but I I literally filled up a notebook with, with information, and I went over it like five six times, you know. I made sure I knew everything that I can know online from the internet. As far as experience goes, it just comes day to day. Yeah. Well, as we spoke before, uh, I recorded uh, something similar to this with Amra the other day, and uh, there was this uh, philosophical question that came to my mind, uh, something as in, like, don't you think that uh, a dispatcher should be aware of, at all times that they are affecting the driver's life at all times, the way they book the load? the where they send the driver what kind of load like the weather outside because you have to you're in a sense responsible for everything that happens after that of course the driver is driving the truck but if you on purpose send someone away from home when there's a holiday coming and you know that they can't get home or they gotta get home to see their family you're affecting their lives and same thing with the uh, misinformation that you might have or your knowledge is not, I mean, there is not enough knowledge. There is not enough basic knowledge about this job and, and you are dispatching someone, you're, you're giving them loads, then maybe you should wait, you know, because you're affecting their lives and maybe in a bad way and, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. Many people don't understand actually this. Many people are thinking like, yeah, well, why not? I can try. If it doesn't work, like, whatever, you know. But like you said, you're taking somebody's business in your hands, you know. You, you're taking their personal income in your in your hands. Of course, if he doesn't make money, I don't make money. But it's like I had a carrier that just told me that they quit their job to do this full time, you know. And now I'm responsible for him to make some money, you know. That's huge. You know, that's a big, big responsibility. Not many people understand this actually, and it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. That's how drivers getting burnt, you know. They hop on Facebook, they see some postings about. I swear, I saw like yesterday a posting for a box truck. They were guaranteeing uh, eight to twelve thousand dollars a week for a solo driver, twelve to fifteen dollars for a team driver for a box truck. And I sent him a comment like, "Is this per month?" no this is per week like pm me you know it's just nonsense and a driver will go with a dispatch like that they will have their worst experience in their life and that's it like that guy's perspective on dispatch is like completely changed it's so hard to to you know to convince somebody that you actually know the job you know yeah and when you tell them a different number uh the to the driver and then their reaction is like well you know what are you doing these guys are they can make two or three times as much i i was actually today i was looking at some comments and uh and uh there was a posting like that and but this was about semi trucks and it was promising a lot of money some uh, unrealistic numbers and uh i uh i expected and there's like 30 comments, uh, 30 yeah. replies to that. And I was expecting for everyone to be ba uh, bashing that, that person, like saying, hey, you know, these are lies. But no, everyone was like, yeah, yeah, I'll sign up with you, PM me, uh, what's your number? Like, they still believe them. I, I, I don't understand that. And I, I, I just don't want to, uh, like, when we were talking before about uh, being responsible for drivers, I, am, uh, I don't want someone to understand me in a wrong way i'm not trying to say this is not for everyone i'm just trying to say you have to do your research you have to uh, uh, either be trained or or like you you train yourself 
and, and understand what's at stake. And then when you feel comfortable and you, 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 you know, you got to make sure that uh, you understand the industry, then start doing it. But before that, make sure you do your research. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I think those comments on Facebook, they make tricks and it's like, they make like 15, 20 profiles and they put a posting and then from the same profiles, they're like commenting, I'm interested, I'm interested. And the Facebook algorithm gets that and it puts the post like on the top and then maybe some real carrier will sign up with them, you know, but it's a, it's a part of the trick. It's sketchy. Wow. It's sketchy. It's really sketchy. I don't post on Facebook. I don't post on Facebook. I just, you know, upload some information, general information about trucking, something that actually can be helpful for, for owner operators, for small carriers, you know, not like aggressive marketing, like come work with me, give me your business. No. And I never, never, never promise like something that I cannot deliver, like $9,000 per week. You know, if you're fine with the real numbers, we can work. If not, there are tons of these pictures yeah. out. Yeah. 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 So uh, speaking about uh, doing research, how hard was it to gather the information uh, in order to start the dispatching business from home? Because there's a lot of information online. Uh, some of them is uh, in a format of uh, uh, YouTube videos. Uh, you can, I'm not sure if you can get any books, but uh, you can read articles and uh, other people's experiences. Uh, but for you, what did you do to, to make sure that you're ready to start and that you have enough uh, information? If I consider this in 2015, I'm like 100% sure that this would not be possible because this has been like for the past couple of years, this has been like, you know, people are getting more and more into it and people like yourself, you know, putting information online, doing YouTube channels, you basically now made like somebody honestly can go to your channel and if he watches all of your videos, I mean, you know, he can get all the information. You present real life situations, you present facts, you present things that has to be done in order to start your business and everything. So that's actually how I did it. You know, I've watched a few credible people's uh, people. One of them is you, you know, but they're all like, they're all suggesting the same things basically. And there are like this agents uh, in the United States, which forms your company and you can go on their website. They are, they've put their requirements, what you need to do, what you need to provide, how much it costs for filling, for maintaining, you know, everything. You have to buy a VPN, you have to buy this and that. You get everything and you're basically like ready to start. But as I said, you will have to have like every single information that is available online written somewhere, you know, and you have to make sure you went over it. Like you cannot just, because opening, opening up a business, it's really easy, man. You just pay the money to the guy and that's it, you know. The hard part is like the actual job, the practice. And that's where I think people should should focus, you know. So what do you think is uh, the hardest part about this job? Like, give me one thing that, that like, everything else, it matters, but it's fairly easy. But what's, like, the, the part that uh, uh, you, as a, as a new dispatcher, found out to be the hardest? Reliable driver, Ennis, for sure like someone that really understands the struggle because I've had drivers that were thinking that I'm not actually on my computer, you know, looking for loads because I wouldn't contact them for two or three hours because there are no loads. And they were thought like, oh, Chris, like you're not doing this seriously, you know, and that pisses me off, you know. I mean, yeah, so I guess not, like finding a quality driver. So it's course. not it's not finding drivers it's finding good exactly drivers. exactly okay. because you can, i've tried like i've tried every tactics like sending emails i went on zip recruiter applying directly from my country you know for example they would state like we are looking specifically for a dispatcher in new jersey i would still apply you know 
And I went over there, no response. I went on Indeed, sent, I don't know, thousands of emails, no response. And then I started contacting drivers directly, like first cold calls. I found that that's really not, I mean, maybe like right now, because there are so many people doing this, drivers are getting like yourself, you've mentioned before, you're getting like 20, 30 uh, phone calls a day, you know, offering dispatching services and people don't want to hear that. So I found the best way would be like, send them a text message first. If they reply, if they're interested about, about your services, then when you call, you actually have some credibility, you know, to talk with them. But still, after that, finding a good driver is really, really, really hard. Like someone that, that understands, you know, that you're actually working for them. Yes. Actually, uh, you have a video like, I'm sorry for cutting you off here. You have a video like, dispatchers are the driver's friends. Not many drivers understand that, you know. I try to make sure, like, to tell them, like, me and yourself, we are both working for the trucking company, you know. We are both employees for ABC Logistics, you know. So as if I find you something good, I'm doing something good for myself. So it's a, you know, a win-win situation by definition. And it has to be like that. Well, like in any industry, there is uh, always people who do a good job and people who do a bad job. And same, uh, even in private life, you know, you have all kinds of people. So if uh, there is a dispatcher that messes up sometimes and there are people like that, then drivers would say, well, you know, all dispatchers are like that and they would lose trust in all of them based on, on what this one or, or two uh, person did. And then same thing with dispatchers and drivers. You have a unreliable driver and then you'd be like, well, you know, drivers are like that. But it is not true. I've, I've had so many drivers and I still have some drivers with me that have been with me for over seven years. And, you know, they're great. And it's, it's just like, it, it's not uh, fair to judge everyone based on the action of, of one dispatcher. And that's, that's why I made that video, just to tell everyone, mm -hmm hey you know like uh, i don't have to dispatch you you can dispatch you it's mm -hmm. even better like you'll save some money and and you'll find laws that you like and it's totally fine but uh don't think that all dispatchers are out there to screw you over because that is not true you know <clears throat> it's so hard to convince them other ways once they get burned with somebody before it's really really hard but I yeah. guess if they don't work, if they don't want to work with a dispatch service, it's fine. They can do it themselves. It's not a yeah. Problem. No, I I encourage everyone to do whatever works for them because uh, uh, some people are like that, and some people will need a dispatcher because maybe uh, their English is not good, or they they don't like talking on the phone, or they don't they are not good in negotiating. There might be a lot of reasons why you might need a dispatcher. And if you don't, even better, it's, you, you know, it's good. Like I can go out and cut my own grass, but some people mm -hmm. don't have time or they don't want to do it. So they hire someone and it's totally fine. Um, exactly. I wanted to ask you uh, about the differences between uh, like working for yourself versus working for someone or maybe even working online uh, as opposed to working uh, somewhere in person. So what, what's the difference? Like you're there uh, by yourself in the room, you don't have a boss, you don't have uh, anyone to report to, but then you have a lot of more responsibilities, you have a lot more stress, a lot of more risk. Uh, so a lot more motivation. A lot more motivation. Really? That's for sure, yeah. like that's the main part. Like you can, you can do the job and be good at it if you're employed somewhere, but Honestly, you will never push yourself to the maximum if you're working for a, for a salary, you know. This way, you are making your own salary. So as much as I can get for my career, more money I will make at the end of it, you know. So that's like the, the, the biggest part. Second, like you mentioned, you don't have a boss. You don't have anybody standing over your shoulder, you know, checking on everything. You do your own schedule. You do it your way. And it's really more convenient this way. And honestly, I'm glad that I never got that job in my in my town about dispatching because I would have getting like comfortable, you know, with the salary and everything. Eventually it would go up, 
and I would be like comfortable and would never change, you know, would never do something like this right now. So I'm actually glad I never got that job. This way, it's, it's, it's way better doing things for yourself. That's for sure. So you're limited if you work for someone, you're limited and you can only grow so much and that's it. But this way, the, there is unlimited potential. For sure, for sure, for sure. Way, way better options, way better options. So in my opinion, I think I was talking about this, uh, so, uh, I was talking about this a while ago. Like if you, you work for someone, let's say 40 hours a week, and uh, you want to be your own boss, you want to quit that uh, eight to five job, and you start working for yourself, but now you work 80 hours <laughs> a week, but you don't mind. You exactly. Know, it's okay. I do it's that. It's better. You enjoy it more. Yeah. I do that. I do that. Like since since the since the beginning. Like basically, I live here. I have my home office. I wake up, do the usual stuff, morning routine. Sit on the computer. The day ends. Go to bed. Wake up. Do it again. You know, that's the schedule for the past. I don't know. Probably like eight months. Every single day. No Saturday. No Sunday. But I don't mind it. Honestly, I don't mind it. That's what I was speaking with some 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 people from my family. Like when I put my headphones after 14 hours in front of the computer, I don't swear, you know, like, oh my God, it's been a rough day. I just I just go to bed, you know, comfortable because it's for myself. And that's really, really important. Really important. The biggest advantage in this, for sure. Yeah. So so that's that's really uh, amazing that uh, like when you speak to other people, they will say, well, uh, a dispatcher job is really stressful. And it is, especially if you have a lot of uh, drivers and the markets are bad. But it makes it more stressful if you're working for someone. If you're in an office with other five dispatchers, uh, you're working for someone else because they put the pressure on you, your boss, your manager, the driver, everyone is blaming you. But if you work for yourself, even though you are the one taking care of, of the business, there's a lot more risk involved. You have to deal with taxes, uh, with everything else, with the business side of the business, not just uh, the dispatching side. But there's still less stress involved that way, as opposed to working for someone and doing strictly dispatching, in my opinion. I agree to some point uh, because... If you mess up at work, you know, you can always go to your, I don't know, supervisor, boss, you know, whatever. He can take the responsibility. Here, people call you, you know, driver calls you, broker calls you, shipper calls you if there's something with, with the delivery or the pickup, you know, and you have no person to go, you know. So you have to pretty much make a solution by yourself, get the right decision on time, you know, let everybody know about the problem. Like if you're in the office, you can always reach out to someone, maybe a colleague, a dispatcher that is more experienced, you know, hey, tell me how to do this right here. I mean, I can send you a message, but <laughs> you know, it's not the same. It's not yeah. the same. The stress but, is there. And especially about the responsibility, like we mentioned, way bigger responsibility than being like employee in some trucking company. You do have a responsibility to find a load, but not like, you know, here it's like other people's business in your hands. And it's it's a big thing, you know, it's there personally. Yeah, yeah it is because uh, you, you got to be responsible. Uh, and I see that you, you are that way. And then if you do everything uh, the way you're supposed to do, if you plan the trip and if there's a problem, you let everyone know on time, uh, then you should be fine because you cannot control any of that. Your your job as a dispatcher is to inform the broker if the truck breaks down, if uh, the the driver is being unloaded for two hours, you know things like that. And once you do that, you take off uh, that responsibility off of you because you've done your part. I but, agree. Uh, but you you haven't worked as an, as far as I know in uh, in a big trucking company that has hundred trucks and you, you have like 10 dispatchers, 
that's really stressful because the boss and the big boss, the owner, they will come after you every day, especially if there are no loads. Uh, because like at the end of the week, I mean, they see what you booked and you just, cause you can't, like if you have a five or six company trucks to cover and you have like five or six owner operators, you ask the owner operator if they want the load, you give it to them. But if you have company drivers, then you have open hands to give them what's out there, the best load to, to keep them moving. So when the markets go, go down, there is not much to choose from, but the boss is asking, hey, you know, why is this truck sitting? You, you know, it's gotta move, it's gotta move. And you keep pushing them. And then you, you might, you have to take whatever is out there. And then the boss comes at the end of the week and they review everything because they cannot, you cannot ask them about every load. But then at the end of the week, when they see that the revenue was much, much uh, lower than the last week, then they will start questioning you. They will do it every day. And that's a lot of stress. Like, you know, and then for every problem, they will blame you. And then uh, they will ask you like, uh, you know, to the point where you have to fire a driver. Like they don't want to tell the driver that they're fired. They're like, oh yeah, just tell them they're fired. Well, what do you mean? You know, it's your truck. Oh, no, no, God. because they don't want to, like they, they have hundred trucks. They, they can't, they don't have time or, or, or the nerve to mess with everyone. And they just uh, push those responsibilities to the dispatcher, you know, and dispatchers have to do a lot of dirty work, you know, th that way. And I, I talked to tens, hundreds of dispatchers and everyone says the same thing, you know. So, so that, that's a big problem. That's why it's, it's stressful, you know. It's really different, like working like this and working in a trucking company, that's for sure. Like you said, I don't have an experience like working for a big trucking company, but I've heard like from Emro mentioned and some other people mentioned like dispatchers in a trucking company, they can handle like, I mean, not they, they can handle, they're handling 15 trucks at a time. I mean, that's just too much, you know, you cannot be efficient with 15 trucks. But this way, our way, you can limit yourself, like, you know, five trucks, six trucks. If you're comfortable doing that, you just proceed from there, you know. And I strongly believe that one dispatcher can handle, like, maximum seven trucks. They will not be running, like, always the seven of them, but you will be, like, from five to seven trucks. That's the maximum, absolute maximum. Anything above yeah. that, you will not do a good job for anybody, you know. And eventually, it's going to fail. I spoke to uh, uh, one uh, guy here in town like uh, a week ago, and he said he has 17 trucks. Uh, you know, he works for a company here locally. Truck company has 80 trucks, and then he covers 17 of them. And usually if the markets are good, then it's not a problem. But uh, markets like these, and I asked him, like, how do you do it? He says, yeah, I just, you know, I'm used to it. Uh, the thing is, Depends, like uh, like you, you're managing the business, you're doing everything, you have to, you do the advertising, you, you're finding new drivers, you know, you got to have time for that. But if you're strictly dispatching, then that's all you have to do. Um, and uh, in my opinion, around 10, 10 uh, trucks, if you're strictly dispatching, is okay. Because out of those 10 trucks, two of them are not going to be working for sure, because they might be sick or the truck is in shop, they're taking time off. Uh, two of them will be working only half of the week. So now you have like seven trucks on the average. Out of those seven trucks, not all of them will be loading and unloading uh, 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 next day, because you know some of them will take two day trips or three day trips. So you will not have 10 trucks every day. You might have five trucks uh, to cover in a day. And that's, that's not mm -hmm. that hard, you know. The only mm -hmm. thing is like, uh, if there's a problem, you know, like one of them has a really big problem uh, and you have to deal with that problem for two hours, then you have other drivers calling me, calling you, or you, you have to find roads for others. That's, that's when it becomes really stressful. Yeah, I agree, I agree 100%. I don't know how do they work like in the, in the trucking companies, but we do everything, like you said. Do they just book loads, and as soon as they're done with the booking, they just forward that to the I don't know other like department, accounting or whatever, right? Do they do that? Depends. Depends on the company. You know, if it's a if it's a bigger company, sometimes they have tracking teams. Uh, so some companies will have a dispatcher, and their job is strictly to book loads, 
And then once they book the load, they give it to, to the next person down the line. And then that opinion. next person will dispatch the driver, they will track the driver, will deal with, will deal with potential problems. Uh, so the, as, but some, some companies, a dispatcher uh, will do everything. You know, so it depends on, on the structure sense. of the company. That yeah. makes sense. So one more question, if you don't mind. Of course. Uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, since you're doing uh, kind of uh, an unusual job uh, where you are from and uh, where you're located, especially because it's online and uh, it's uh, in a different language and you work for uh, a different country, if I can say it that way. But so how is the reaction uh, from your friends and family when you tell them what they find out, you know, what's uh, how do you react to that? Like my reaction was ridiculous when I started making actual money, you know, with this. I couldn't believe it myself. But I guess I don't know when it's people are nowadays familiar with online working because there are like millions of opportunities to work online. And it wasn't like a big deal, you know, when I initially told them. But still, like I have endless support for my family here. They believe in me. The most important thing, I knew that I'm going to success the day I began. I swear. Like it's not something, I, I knew it. I was familiar with the responsibilities. I just needed the, the, the information about the trucking industry. As soon as I got that, like a couple of months into it, when I started working day by day, I just getting better, better, better. It's just, it, it's doable. It's doable as long as you believe in it. And as I said at the beginning, as long as you're not seeing this as a side hustle, it's doable. If you go all in, you'll be successful. But not yeah. everybody will succeed, you know? Not everybody will succeed. And that's fine. That's understandable with any, any business, not just dispatching. So it's, it's the mindset, uh, I suppose. It's the mindset mostly. for sure. Yeah. For sure. Okay. I could have seen this, you know? since the yeah. day one okay well and, and it's midnight over there now right and you're still working it is it is actually five minutes until midnight so i just <laughs> covered like i said at the beginning i just covered my last truck so yeah i'll just do some paperwork now and just i guess go okay. to bed wake up and yeah, do it well, i'll let you go to sleep then I, i'm really glad we had this uh, conversation and and it was really great uh, uh, having you here with uh, your attitude and and the advice that you had it's it's just really great thank you thank you very much Anis. thank you very much for the great opportunity okay i'll talk to you later